Curing traditionally has been more of an art than a science for cannabis. The individuals who cure cannabis are tr uh, traditionally craft practitioners. And what they would do is they would hold cannabis in some form of sealed container where they could try to maintain a humidity level of approximately 60, 62%. And you could use a hygrometer for that, which is a humidity gauge. And you would allow these, this product to off gas, which means you're decarboxylizing it. You're allowing all the oxygen to come out of the product. And you're holding it in some form of seal container. We would, we would call it burping. So we would let this, let this container uh, breathe and then open it up and vent. And through a series of ventilation, opening and closings, looking at the gauges, holding the product in hand and see, smelling the product, you can start to see where the sweet spots come in. And typically after a couple weeks of, of curing, so there's a drying process, we get into curing process. A couple of weeks of curing, you start to see these subtleties appear in the flower to the nose that you couldn't smell prior. And ideally, if we could hold it for a month to two months, it would be an incredible product that goes forward. But a lot of it is cost considerations and do you have the ability to hold uh, an entire load worth of cannabis in a curing area? So that would be infrastructure. So sometimes what you see is abbreviated periods of drying, abbreviated periods of curing to fit the cyclical needs of a facility. So there's perfect and then there's real world and the growers trying to find that, that middle ground between the two of them. The temperatures and humidity levels are very similar to really a good dry, where in the past we didn't have the same level of infrastructure, meaning equipment and tools, to control an environment the way we do today. And with modern air conditioning and controlled heaters and humidification equipment, we can hold these sweet spots in the 60s and around 60 percent. Um, 60 degrees, anything under 68, allows you to maintain your monoterpene concentrations. And monoterpenes are simply uh, smell molecules that are very lightly bonded, which means that as they warm up, they volatize and they leave. And so if we can hold these temperatures in the below 68, 60 is a really good area. We're tougher to do in the past, like I said, because of equipment. And, but now with the modern technology, things are a little bit more easy to do. And we can hold it around 60, 62% in the moisture content. In the, in the air content, it lets us have a flower that's approximately you know, 12, 13% total moisture. And that allows us to have enough moisture to keep the, the flower itself pliable and not so much that we have the pr propensity for rot. The temperature allows us to keep it so that we're not having volatized monoterpenes and below 60 starts to become uh, very aggressive in terms of cost to run uh, chilling material to get to that level. So the main points with the curing process is to maintain humidity levels that allow the plant, to the material, to not desiccate, overly dry out. Once we start to lose the, the, the essential oils from the flower itself, it starts to degrade quickly when the end user gets it in the container. And the feeling of cannabis when you break it up, the way it is, touches your fingers, the way the oils move, is one, of the, is one of the indicators that people have been educated on for centuries to determine quality. And so you have to make sure that you're able to satisfy the end user's understanding of what quality is, and that's partly tactile, how we touch, partially through the nose, how we smell, how we visually see, and then ultimately how we experience through the mouth to the lungs to the brain.